I'm Braden. I'm Zell. I'm Dan. And thank God we're on a break because that episode is boring as shit. Now for some good stuff. Fucking sp- <laughs> space news. I, I had a cool little background here, but I, I don't know why it didn't load. There we there. go. Space there news. we go. Space news. Um, so what do we got first here? We have um, there's binary star system that may explode in your lifetime. So, um, oh, pretty dope. Well, I guess I you would. I think it. I. Well, that's what I was wondering. I was like, you know, is this going to be something where it lights up the sky, or am I going to have to get like a pretty hefty celestron to be able to see this explosion? No, I believe it's V Sagitt Sagittae or Sagittae, or abbreviated V S G E. It's so faint, it's hard to find up there with the naked eye. Even or even with a mid-sized telescope. So, you need a really powerful telescope. And well, it's like within our lifetime. Does it mean like <laughs> we'll still be able to see it, or are we going to be locked away in the the old folks' home? Well, I'm probably old folks' home. But with the James Webb telescope, you know, maybe we'll be getting some uh, some pretty nice shots of it. Yeah. No. It's uh, they say experts at the Louisiana State. University think these it's a binary star system system, but when they do explode, they will be eventually the brightest stars in the night sky. Oh, interesting. So For then both. it's gonna fuck up everyone <laughs> looking to go north. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Changes the North Star completely. Yeah. Yeah, and I guess they'll they become so bright they'll both almost they'll merge into one. One giant bright star. Make a star. Make a star. That's what we should name it when we we coined it here. That star when it finally, <laughs> they all joined together. Mega star. Yep, we got it. Uh, next up, we have, and this is might be my favorite piece of space news for obvious reading reasons. Uh, <laughs> giant mush balls could be hiding the missing ammonia on Neptune and Uranus. Giant mush balls in Uranus. Your- in, in your, your anus. Or on your anus. I knew exactly why Braden picked this one as soon as I read the headline. I honestly, I didn't read anything past <laughs> just, the headline. <laughs> what the fuck does a mush ball then? Well, it's a mush ball. It's a, essentially, uh, according to the article, the mush balls that they're talking about are like hailstones. They're kind of like just a hail that's made of not just like here, it's like water and air, but it's it's more ammonia and water mixed together. And they go through the same type of cycle, you know, like hail does here, the formation of hail goes up and down, up and down in the atmospheres and then gets pulled back down. What they've found interesting is that the Juno probe, uh, which is currently exploring the Jupiter system, has noticed that the ammonia in the upper atmosphere has formed these mush balls uh, that merge with water and then they're actually present in the atmosphere. Uh, what's strange is that Neptune and Uranus have, uh, up till now, it's been kind of a, a bit of a mystery as to where the ammonia is on these two planets, since uh, the gas giants were always assumed to have been uh, formed out of the same kind of primordial soup in our in our solar system. So uh, they would essentially, like scientists have always assumed that they're you know, posited that their structures should be the same, their composition should be the same. But they have found that Uranus and Neptune, usually you can't find the same amount of ammonia proportionate to the other gas giants. Mm -hmm. Interesting. So now the theory is, is that perhaps like on Jupiter, they found these, these mush balls of ammonia and water. They're saying that perhaps that, these mush balls form on both Jupiter, or sorry, Uranus and, and Neptune, <laughs> and then kind of hang down lower beneath the upper atmosphere where they're easily observable. So we can't see them, but they're down there. So they're frozen ammonia and water balls. Mush yes. balls. Yes. Just fly around the gas giant. So. Yep. Do they, do, would they fall like hailstones, do, do they think? Well, or they like fall. Just... It's Yeah, they fall, and then once they get to a certain, you know, they get closer to the, the surface or whatever. Like, it's a gas giant, so I don't. Like, the, the closer they get to the, <laughs> into the atmosphere, then the, they heat up, 
and then they release the ammonia and then the water just goes back up and then it goes it kind of just they just go up and down up and down rinse and repeat with the mush balls mm -hmm. and then they're just saying that perhaps on uranus and neptune instead of following the kind of cycle that they do on jupiter where they go down they come way back up and then they go back down maybe in jupiter and uranus they're just like stuck for a longer period in, mush the, balls in the lower atmosphere stuck on uranus there you have mm -hmm. it yes. that's, what I, that's what i took from that that's what we get from this uh, so they're, they're taking one phenomenon and just extrapolating to the other gas mm -hmm. yep um this one, I, I wasn't that surprised of this one. A new paper claims photosynthesis could be possible in the clouds of Venus. I mean, you, you know, Talk there's there's been a, a whole tons of times where we've talked about, you know, you could potentially live in the skies of Venus in, in floating cities. Yeah, surfing right? the extreme winds of Venus. On yeah, you could essentially, yeah, you could have a cloud city. Yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> the fact that they said that photosynthesis could p be possible, I'm like, well... I would have said the first time that they said, you know, we could potentially have s cloud cities. I was like, well, I would have just assumed that you would be able to do photosynthesis if it's very similar to like, like our living conditions now that it would make sense th that it would also be okay for plants. So, they're, yeah. So they're saying that cause on photos, like I always thought it was going to be too like acidic or something, but now they're saying it might it falls within the parameters of like life could survive there. Yeah, they used to originally think that the clouds would be too acidic since they're comprised mostly of sulfuric acid, that it would be impossible for you know any type of uh, life form or even photosynthesizing life form to exist there. But some scientists went back and revisited some of the data uh, that we have on Venus and determined that some of the signatures that indicate sulfuric acid could actually be caused perhaps by neutralized forms of sulfuric acid, like ammonium bisulfate. But so if that's the case, then you would have a lot more water uh, and then a lot less acidity. So possibly you could have life forms that it, anaerobic life forms uh, that produce, you know, that that function photosynthetically. Yeah, because we talked about uh, we talked about it a while ago. Though, what, what were those what were those things called? Phosphine gas. Phosphine gases. Yeah, yeah, they detected a good chunk. So that could be either organisms of some type, or they also said like maybe some type of volcanic activity. I think those are the two leading theories at this point. Going until down. we can get a probe there, until we can alien. probe Venus. We're going with alien microbes sure. float their own cloud cities on Confirmed. Venus. Confirmed. Uh, this, next one's, uh, this next one's interesting. Uh, Planet X confirmed. It's on its way. A gigantic comet approaching from out outer <laughs> solar system, maybe largest ever seen. Um, it's Planet Planet 10, Planet X, Nibiru. Yes. It's coming back. Uh, it's going to drift past our planet. Look the beings are going to back again. jump the off it. Yeah, the Anunnaki are going to leap off of it to come collect mono atomic gold right. from South Africa to insert into the atmosphere so they don't mm -hmm. get, die or something or yes. along those lines, I believe. Yeah. Um, this comet is so huge it it was initially mistaken for a dwarf uh, planet, but um, I guess it's not going to hit. NASA's saying that uh, they're seeing. Mm -hmm. That it, uh, we're in no danger of it uh, of colliding with Earth this time no, around. Yeah, this time around, uh, it's gonna be probably right outside of Saturn. Right is where they're putting it. Like they're putting the trajectory. Yeah, closest point will be around Saturn. So All right, um, you definitely won't be able to see it with the naked eye, even though it's gonna be uh, it's 155 kilometers or 96 miles in diameter. Ooh, but you so still cool. won't be able to see it. That's a world. Um, there mm -hmm. and the uh you know it hasn't actually come through the solar system in three million years like through the uh, out from the the outer edges of our outer solar system yeah they're thinking it fly, it's flying in from the Oort cloud like the farthest reaches of our solar system and they're super excited to take a look at it because these type of icy rocks that that hang out there uh are thought to have been unchanged for around 4.5 billion years so when they pass through our solar system closer to our sun uh, all kinds of stuff kind of 
comes off of it as it heats up or whatever, and they'll be able to kind of analyze uh, the kind of trails that come off of it. And that should give us a lot of a pretty good look at what's outside in our yeah. outer solar system. They named it the C-2014 UN-271, or by the scientists who found it, was it Bern, Bernardinelli? Dash Berns, Bernstein or Bernstein comment or quite a or Bernstein, Bern, yeah, <laughs> Mandela, <laughs> an alter universe. Of Bernstein. Mm. Um, next up, this is a quick bit of spaces just from me to you. Um, get ready for auroras, baby. They're coming. Um, Game. We got some big geomagnetic storms are imminent, which means high chance for. Auroras. Um, that's all I wanted you, to say for that one. Did you read it? Nope. It was <laughs> September 27th, so we missed it. So hopefully you had your eyes on the skies. Oh shit! <laughs> <laughs> I thought it was. Uh, I thought it was recent. I, doesn't it take longer it to get? Solar solar storm for Monday, September 27th. Oh, that's like last week. This is old yes. space. News. God damn it! <laughs> you know, going back to the roots, though. You're going back to the roots. Yeah. So yeah. hopefully so, you had your eyes on the skies and you've seen some auroras. Yeah. Uh, hey, well, we're not. There could be a rovers right now. You don't know. It's, Listen to this. Is, well, we're still approaching solar maximum, so <laughs> we're still getting there. Increased uh, solar activity. Last bit of space news. Um, you know, I think we talked about it on the main show. Um, cracks on the ISS are likely serious. <laughs> you know what? No shit. <laughs> right. So those are old cracks. These are new cracks. Yeah, that's what we talked about, though. Are you talking about new, new cracks? We just talked about the new cracks. Oh. The, the, like, fissures and stuff on one of the Russian mod modules, you know, which has been, you know, first. Well, we talked about the ones before that they had cracks, because they had cracks previously in, like, the living uh, the living quarters or the habitable, the habitability quarters that yeah. the astronauts are staying on. And then they, <laughs> they plugged it with a piece of tape. They plugged it with a tape. A, a tape, but I mean, I space tape, smaller cracks. But we also talked about the one time they had the drill hole in the newly inserted right. module, and they're like, mm -hmm. uh, This was someone tampered with this mm -hmm. before it came up here. Yeah, so I mean, any type of crack in a 20 year old satellite traveling 20,000 kilometers an hour around our atmosphere, potentially with uh, micro bullets around trying to smash through it at any given second is probably not a good idea. Not a good thing. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it's it's getting old. Mm -hmm. um, you know, <laughs> it's it's sketchy, right? It's any the air sleeking out, like yeah, you know, it's time for something it's, new. I think it's being bombarded by radiation and micro particles all the time, and it's nothing lasts forever. And they're saying after twenty twenty five. They predict an avalanche-like failure of numerous elements on board the ISS. Well, it's like a, yeah. I imagine it's it gets to a point where it's like a car, like the tech is getting so outdated, and then it's just you know there's just one thing. The, the, for, they're using space tape to fix it at this point, right? Yeah. And let's let's you, you know what that is duct tape, right? That's what they're using. <laughs> We're we're duct taping that thing yeah. together. I mean, it's it's the extreme level of wear and tear that you're putting on this the, this type of equipment. So yeah, uh, 2025 is a pretty good uh, prediction as to what it's what's going to happen. I mean, things could could last a bit longer. I know NASA said that they're planning like once it's done, it's done, and then they're going to be like, okay, just push it into an orbit that'll have it burn up on impact. And I think NASA's done with building space stations. I think they've said that they're already. Um, they're, you know, they've got like $4 million that they're going to split between at least two companies, um, uh, which there are a couple, a number that are vying for the next, uh, contract to build a space station, uh, in orbit. I think the Chinese already have their first piece up there already. Yeah. It's yeah. empty right now. It's being guarded by a plushie. <laughs> what? They just left a plushie on there. There's no, plushie. there's like a plushie toy in the, there's like right now that's the only thing guarding the. That's the only <laughs> absent. Yeah. yeah, is the <laughs> occupant is a, a like a little plushy toy. Um, anyways, that's uh, that's all we got for space news. Uh, just remember, keep those eyes on the skies and uh, enjoy the rest of the show. Peace. To keep up to date with all things alien theorist theorizing. Follow us across social media on Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and Facebook. For updates on new videos and content on YouTube, 
don't forget to click like and subscribe and hit that notifications button to keep those eyes on the skies with alien theorists theorizing.